everybody, and welcome to Friday Football Take. Uh, my name is David from 7 and welcome back. And yes, for the third week in a row, we are going to talk coaching. Because again, I mean, we got a week to Super Bowl. What else are we going to talk about? So, big news this week, Sean Payton going to the Denver Broncos. I'm going to circle back and talk about what this impacts to the Broncos, but let's talk about Sean Payton going to the Saints. Now, Sean Payton going to the Broncos for a first and a second, they get a fourth round pick back. That's a massive haul. That's an impressive job for the Saints. As a Panthers fan, I hate this trade. Because Sean Payton could have very easily sat and did media for their, their foreseeable future and come back and not really been that degraded as a coach. I don't think he's exactly going to not have the pick of the litter as far as jobs are concerned. I mean, look at Bill Cowher. I mean, it was like 10 years that he was still being named for every job that was decent. Being a Saints fan got me thinking. First and a second, that is a massive haul. I mean, I wish Carolina could get a haul for any of our coaches, but we never have coaches that are, like, in demand and retire. We tend to fire all of them. We talked about that last week. Never mind. But, so I ask, I ask you this, and I want you to think about it. How many members of the, of the Saints roster would you trade a first and a second for? Now, the Saints almost made the playoffs. Definitely a playoff-type team. How much talent is on that team that you would give up a first and a second for a member of? Let's talk about the Saints. Now, the Saints for years were trying to get Drew Brees that second opportunity because they had that first ballot Hall of Fame quarterback. And they really screwed up their cap the last couple of years. Then they screwed it up even more trying to get Sean Payton to cobble together something. And now they're not exactly in salary cap Hades, but they're not far from it. But let's talk about what kind of talent they've got. So, now, uh, how can I best put this? See, I belong to a site in secret society. And our NFL fans, we kind of hashed this out. And basically, I asked them, looking at the Saints roster, what would you give up a one and a two for? And I had some players that were on my list, and I had, yes, I would, the maybes, and they we kind of pitched this back and forth. And I'll put a link to the Discord channel in the description below, if the powers that be over there allow me to. And like I said, and then you can go in and argue about the NFL, because that's what we like doing. It's, it's a great group, but don't get me wrong. So, my four that I came up with. Cam Jordan, Olave, and Ramchick. Excuse me, three. I only came up with three. And fairly quickly, I got shouted down that, no, Cam Jordan is not worth a first and a second. Okay, stupid me. Those of you that know me for a while know that every now and again I do have a stupid take. Olave was agreed fairly quickly, yes, that's worth a first and a second. Not to toot my own horn, I did pick him as my preseason rookie of the year. Ding, point for me. Hopefully made up for that Cam Jordan comment. Ramchick, again, pretty quickly agreed. Yes, that's worth a first and a second. So let's go to my possibles. Without the injury history, I think Michael Thomas is worth a first and a second. Uh, the consensus kind of came down to him being worth a second, as it stands right now. Pete was on my maybe list. The group kind of decided that, yes, he's worth a first and a second. You would give that up. You know, two-fifths of your offensive line worth a first and a second. Pretty good for the Saints, which is probably why Andy Dalton's had such a good year. Dalton, not on the list. Alvin Kamara, on my maybe list, only because, I don't know why I put him on there. I shouldn't have. But yeah, that's a, that's a big no. And Davenport, that, that was a no fairly quickly. He was a light maybe. I was thinking just because of that potential, I could see it. But the group basically said, yeah, no, that's not happening. Maybe a low first if I already knew what pick I had. Like if I had pick 25, I might get that. But I'm not giving a first and a second. Two twos was about his level. McCoy, that was also bandied about as a first and a second. So I'm looking at Olave, Ramchick, Pete, and McCoy was the four definites. Now, one player the group did throw back at me is Lattimore, as he should be worth a first and a second. And I kind of pushed back on that. I, they shouted me down, so I'll, I'll accept their answer. But... To me, corner is one of those positions where they have to fit your system. 
and you're still not sure if you have a true number one corner or not until you see him play in your uniform. So to me, I would rather take, and whenever I say a first and a second, I pretend like I'm picking 15th round, like I'm a 7 and 10 team. Uh, but I'm always thinking like I've got the 15th pick in each draft round. I almost think I would rather have my first round pick try that at a corner, my second round pick try that at a corner, and see what happens rather than see if Lattimore fits my system, see if he fits my, uh, my defensive scheme. So to me, I would not trade Lattimore for first and second. But again, group kind of shouted me down, so I have to take their answer. I mean, Pete and Ramchick, yeah, they fit any offensive line system. It'd be hard not to, to have them well. So that's what we came down with. Five players on the entire Saints roster are worth a one and a two. And again, I'm 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 kind of pushing back and saying four. But that kind of makes me question just how strong the Saints roster is when your coach is at worst the sixth best player or sixth best asset you have that's that's eligible for trade. That's kind of scary. Now not long while we were having this discussion, Tom Brady retired, and I mean, we may talk about that at a later date, but instantly the conversation kind of flipped to the Bucks, and if the Bucks went through this exercise, and like immediately eight players came out that were worth the first and the second, and questions came was how much of the draft could the Bucks own if they found the right, you know, trade partners? Could they have like the old... The old joke, you know, could Bill Belichick the way he keeps trading down, could he have like the entire fourth round? I kind of wonder if the Bucks could have like half the second round if we really wanted it. I mean, if you, Mike Evans, would you trade me two seconds and a low first? Would you trade me two seconds and a third? I kind of think quite a few teams would, especially those that are pushing. Uh, but that's getting beside the point. But I kind of wonder just how many. Uh, draft picks the Bucks could get if they just decided to blow everything up. If you have a desire for me to do this, I mean, if the Discord group is agreeable to it, maybe we'll make this like a regular uh, thing. If you kind of like that, please let me know in the comments. We'll see what we can do here. If the powers that be will let me, because again, it's not my group. But let's flip this around to Peyton and how he's looking at with the Broncos. Now, to get a quarterback and a coach, the Broncos have given up three first-round picks and three second-round picks and three players. That is a massive amount of draft capital to give up. But again, what do the Broncos need? They need a quarterback, as does three-quarters of the NFL, and they need an adult at head coach. But they got an adult as a head coach. Sean Payton immediately fixes your locker room. Uh, can he fix Russell Wilson? Well, how has Sean Payton done without Tree Breeze? That is a bit of a question mark. Yeah, he's done well, but has he... Okay. The Broncos definitely have a ton of talent. It does... I do think it makes it easier for players to come back. But, again, as I said last week, you don't really have to move to make Wilson great again. You just basically have to back up his clock careers. I think Payton can do that if he can get him a good offensive line coach, and if we can make Russell Wilson comfortable. Peyton can make Russell Wilson comfortable. I don't think there is a massive talent gap between Peyton, uh, excuse me, between Drew Brees and Russell Wilson. I don't think I'm exactly comparing Dan Orlovsky and Joe Montana. We'll talk about that Monday at the, at the Monday Ramp. But I think it's, I mean, if it works out, great. It's kind of like, look at what all the Bucks gave up for John Gruden. I would say they would do that trade again in a heartbeat. I don't want to think that's a bad thing. It, it, everything works out if everything works, okay? The Lakers may be putrid for a while, but they got a banner hanging there. Toronto gave up a ton, but they got a banner hanging there. You can get a word of, you can fix a lot of stuff, you got a banner hanging. I mean, Giving up a lot of stuff and going winning five and six games the next two years, okay, now we've, we've made a mistake. But it all depends on what you got. So do I think the Broncos gave up too much? On the surface, yeah. One thing I do wish the NFL would do is conditional picks. It's kind of like, okay, I'll trade. If I'm Denver, I'm like, okay, I'll trade you for Sean Payton. And if next time my first-round pick is in the 20s, you get it whether it be in 2024 or 2034. But 
you'll get that first round pick and you get an unconditional second round pick next year. That's kind of, you know, that's one thing I do like about the NBA does it. I'll give you a first, but you ain't getting a first overall pick. The NFL for some reason doesn't do that. But one thing I will say, Sean Payton is not stupid, okay? Uh, we can talk about how he comes across whenever he's talking to Cowherd or how he comes across on the on the Fox game set. I don't really think he's that great. He's not Joe Montana bad, but, you know, he's... Mm. But still, Sean Payton, as far as a coach is concerned, is not an idiot. He took this job because he thinks he can fix Russell Wilson. Sean Payton's cost me enough grief over the years as a Panthers fan. I don't think I'm going to push back against him. So if he thinks he can fix Russell Wilson, then I have to think that Russell Wilson is fixable and fixable by this coach. Because you would lose a lot of money betting against Sean Payton when it comes to how good he can be. Which is why he got the job. Sean Payton obviously is not going to sit there and go to Denver. And Denver's going to say, okay, Sean, if we take you... New Orleans wants a first and second pick. And Sean Payton's like, no, I need more draft capital than that. that no, you do that, I don't want the job. Because I'm sure if, if New Orleans would have been like, we want five first-round picks, Sean Payton like, yeah, you do that, and I'm not coming. It ain't happening. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to do what, uh, what's-his-face did, Denver, uh, the Raiders coach did at uh, Indianapolis. Excuse me. Sorry, DJ, I blocked the guy's name out. But I just don't think that Sean Payton's going to put himself in a position to fail. Because if he does fail, if Denver does win five and six games the next two years, then he's going to be looked at, well, he's only a good coach because he's got Drew Brees. And I don't think he's going to do that. So that's going to do it for this week for our Friday football rant. Do appreciate you sticking out with me. Make sure you like, subscribe, do all the good fun stuff. Make sure you hit the website. Uh, and we will see you next time. Possibly Monday. I might have a new show for